Skull and welcome my friends, I'm Honotrak and we are playing Expeditions Viking on Insane Difficulty. Welcome back. Um, we are done in Skjern. Last time we really cleared out the forest. I think we did every quest there. Except for those two people that were talking about um, searching something and that they couldn't stop until the big one gave their gave their gave his okay. But um, I guess we're not going to find out what, what's happening there. But we removed some unwanted guests. Um, um, some soldiers from school is called Cleaver um, out of the woods and uh, so now we're ready to either go grave robbing or to move to Ribe and in light of this being insane difficulty I'm actually um, going to go to Ribe first um, contrary to what I uh, said at the end of last episode because um, we aren't too um, great in terms of equipment yet um, Rusqua doesn't have any defense over here um, we only have hide armor he doesn't have any defense I'd rather see our guys a little bit better um, a little bit better equipped and I know from the last series that I can buy one set of um, armor and a spear and stuff from um, a dude in the harbor in, in Ribe. He's selling um, the things of his now um, dead uh, wife who was a shield maiden. So I think we're going to go for that. Um, one thing that I wanted to do before we do this, um, oftentimes enemies have gotten the jump on us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give everyone a shield as a secondary weapon. And we're going to start out with that. Um, so we're going to have a true shield wall. Um, switch you. You're going to get a pine shield. He is going to have a little bit of a difficulty because he has the Dane Axe and nothing else in the second um, hand. Actually, I could give myself the, the single-edged sword here. It's not bad. There's no downside to carrying more weapons. Um, in terms of weight or anything, he already has a shield. Nephia could definitely use a shield, so have the pine shield, switch that. And you could also use a shield. Um, yeah, over here, have the pine shield as well. Right, so that's good. Everyone is now carrying a shield. You already have a shield. Um, you have Alvaldor's helmet. Um, it's going to give Aedis a, spe a specific bonus, but um, let's just give that to Aslifer here. Mm. Yeah, it's buffing his defense a little bit. Um, I could also give it to Gunnar. Yeah, he's the only one without a shield, so I think we gotta we gotta increase his defense. I already have a leather helmet, so I think that's fine. Not too many helmets among us, but at least this this will give him some defense, some better defense than before. Um, I think that's fine. Everyone has now a shield except for him, so that's looking good. Let's move on. Let's go to Reba. I think there are also some uh, easier quests that we can just um, solve through talking. If I remember this correctly, um, the grave robbing thing involved a lot of fighting. I mean, you could talk your way through some things, but there is a lot of fight to be had on that map. I don't think Ribe was quite as fight heavy, um, although there are some fights to be had there. I think we can get ambushed and... Um, uh, some other surprises in there. Um, now the question is, should we camp over here? You can see that Aslifer is going to get fatigued right before we arrive there. But it's currently day. So I think I'd rather be in there during the day. Um, don't want to really traipse in there. Traipse around Reba in the night. So we're going to take these guys. It's fine. Let's go. From the from her stats, Aedis is actually a good tank. <laughs> Could make her a tanking woman, put her in the front lines. But having only five herdmen and won't really allow me to use her because I need Roskwa and uh, the other people. So we start out over here. Reba is actually huge. This is a huge city. This town goes on forever. Have you never been to Reba before? Has Hulda ever left Skjern? You're a grown woman. Are you not allowed to leave on your own? Hulda can't prevent me anymore, but I don't know. I feel obligated towards her. It's a generous thing what you've done for her over the years. Hmm. Fair is fair, you know. Yeah, she learned the whole witching thing from Hulda, so I guess that's that's the pay for it. I like these conversations. They weren't in the um, preview build. But it does add a lot of flavor. Oh! What is this? 
The guard on the right is lanky, blonde, and doesn't seem to have eyebrows. Oh, yeah, we must have run into um, the longhouse of um, Jarl uh, Maranghilder. Fucking freezing out here! The one on the left is a large man, round face with doleful eyes. Standing in the cold while they talk around the fire. It's no job for a fighting man! Boredom. Teeth chattering! They cease their belly aching and look at you. Do your Ranghilder's huskals usually complain this much? Maybe if you were stood here in the cold all day. Watching people come and go, no glory or even just a good fight to be had. Might be you'd complain too. Hmm, who are you? The first guard nods at his companion. He's Nuki. He's Sigmundr. Hmm, let's look around the yard. A table is laden with warm food, steaming still in the cold air. Against the wall of the longhouse, a row of casks stand tapped and ready. Why is there a feast prepared but no one at the tables? The Jarl is seeing a visiting Godi and his followers. All the way from Glavendrop, I think. He's a pale fellow. No wonder when him and his don't eat. Don't want to eat or drink. A right shame. All this food and drink with no one to enjoy it. A oh, right shame. <laughs> hmm. I really shouldn't go to waste like this. <laughs> the two guards look at each other and smile. One might say that it's our duty as Huskars to make sure the Thrall's hard work is honored. If it is our duty, then how can we refuse? A challenge then, like Thor and Utgard. Right, so I can challenge these guys, apparently. Hmm. I guess we're going to challenge them to drinking and eating. I wonder what uh, what influence is that? I'm thinking endurance, maybe? Who has the highest endurance? Oh, it's Nefia, me, and Gunnar. Hmm. All right. All right. Um... Let's save it. Uh, let's challenge this guy first. Sigmund paces back and forth in front of the casks, examining them with a hungry look in his eyes. He snaps upright, his limbs awkwardly attempting to assume a casual stance as he notices your approach. I'm feeling a bit thirsty, and there's plenty of ale. An easy, almost haughty smile settles on his face. Might be that there is, but I've laid a cask dry in three gulps. We're gonna We're gonna send Gunnar into this one, I think. Um here Gunnar, I'm sure you can drink a lot. <laughs> Gunnar grabs the offered cup and dips his fingers, flicking a few droplets into the nearby brazier, an offering to Loki. About time! Ha <laughs> ha! Gunnar manages to finish two brimming cups before leaning forward with hands on his knees. He hiccups and looks for a moment as though he's about to be sick. Sigmundr lowers his own cup, ale running down his chin and down his front. Takes Sigmundr a moment to focus on Gunnar's face. Enough! No worse provisions can man carry than too deep a draught of ale. Let it be a draw. Gunnar looks relieved. He takes an unsteady step and offers Sigmundr an open palm. He shakes it with a nod and a smile. Um, Alright, my reputation with Rebe has apparently increased. <laughs> I was actually hoping that Gunnar would be able to do more there. Oh well. Let's uh, challenge this guy for an eating contest. Nuki hovers over the table, picking from it with care and savoring his choices. When you approach, his expression is furtive for a moment, but he rallies, puffing out his chest and gut. I have an appetite to win. Do you? Nephew groans and looks away. <laughs> a glimmer of confidence spurs on his grin. I will eat like the fire in Utgar, Loki's hall. I'm gonna challenge him myself, and yet you'll be no match for me. <laughs> you settle in at the table next to Nuki and your herd gathers to watch. The food lay spread out before you, barley flatbread baked with garlic and butter, smoked and salted fish with dill and honey glazed parsnips. You reach out for a spit of horse meat, char, tender and fatty. You savor the first bite, grease dribbling down your chin. Next to you, Nuki has seized a wedge of cheese in one hand and a smoked fish in the other. Man, I'm getting hungry from just reading this. You tear the last chunk of meat from the spit with your teeth and chew furiously. 
Glancing over at the challenger beside you, you see Nuki finishing his first portion as well. He glances in your direction and smirks, hands reaching for a second helping. On to the main course then. Ha! You tear into a trench of buttered carrots and peas with your bare hands. Your breaths come harder as you chew and swallow, a sheen of sweat beginning to beat on your forehead in spite of the chill air. Each bite is accompanied by the sound of blood thundering in your ears. You gasp for air as you finish and glance at your opponent. His pace has slowed considerably and he seems to be in worse shape than you are. I feast as my father does in Valhall. After a moment of consideration you drag aside a smoked salmon glazed with honey and hazelnuts onto your plate. As you look to Nuki his eyes meet yours and there is a mixture of defiance and desperation as he reaches for a third helping. Your jaw works mightily and your breaths are labored. The food before you that not long ago looked so inviting now threatened to make your bile rise. You attempt to swallow but the bite won't go down. Instead you feel a heaving sensation as your gut clenches. Only just managing to twist away from the table a spray of sour bile and masticated food spill from your mouth. You retch and heave for several agonizing moments. The rotund housecarl leans back, his breaths labored while he chews. He slaps a hand to his belly, swallowing and grinning. You ate well, friend, just not well enough. He leans back, hands still on his belly, and lets out a content sigh. Then, as though reaching some unspoken agreement with himself, he reaches forward and puts a bit more on his plate. Okay. Ranghildra herself. <laughs> that wasn't too glorious, to be, to be quite frank. Ranghildra herself appears in the doorway, a look of moderate disapproval on her face. What's all this commotion about? Nuki, what are you? Sigmund, are you drunk? And Thorgrim, did you put them up to this? She holds up her hands. Wait, no, I don't want to know. If you're here to see me, I have time now. And you two, go tell Grimmel to send new guards to replace you. Okay, we gained a skill point. That was not too glorious. <laughs> Guess I should have stopped. I'm pretty sure that endurance is the thing that makes this possible. Maybe if I had Aedis, we would actually be... Uh, able to win this because Aedas has 10 endurance pretty sure she would have been able to eat way more but I was actually counting on Gunnar to at least win the drinking contest against that guy look at the guy he's just a scrawny little lad and Gunnar is a huge giant <laughs> oh well this is how it goes let's talk to Jarl Ranghildr ah uh. It was kind of a stupid contest, to be quite honest. Oh, this would be stealing. Okay, we're not gonna steal from Ranghildr. Hello. Ranghildr the White politely stands when you approach her seat and clasps your wrist with a firm grip. Welcome into Ribe, Thorgrim. To what do we owe the pleasure of your visit? I seek your permission to recruit a crew for my ship. I think we can be open with her. She's been friendly. She has no real motive to weaken me. If School of Skullcleave actually does eat my clan, um, then he's her, her next neighbor and he might actually make a play for her throne or for her yeah, title and all that. I seek permission to recruit a crew for my ship. For an expedition? I won't stand in your way, but the warning I gave your father extends to you as well. Stay in known territory if you value your life. Thane School encroaches upon my territory. I'm forced to seek aid elsewhere. A troubling accusation. Are you able to prove it? Working on it. Meanwhile, I'm simply here to assemble a crew. Put word out at my barracks that you're seeking a crew. Mercenaries are often found here, sparring with my herdmen. You've come to trade at your market as well. Very good. As always, we shall be glad to have your business. Talk later. If you need my counsel, my door is always open to my neighboring thanes. Okay. She's actually been really nice. I do appreciate that. Um, even though I just puked in her front yard. <laughs> <laughs> I was confident. Looked like I could eat more than the other guy. I guess I should have sent Gunnar to eat and do the drinking myself. I wonder if that would have had a different outcome. Well, what's done is done. Um, in terms of looting, I tend to loot everything, but I don't think I'm going to do that on camera. So what I'm going to try to do is we're going to explore Ribe, um, see what there is to see so that we don't have any ambush stuff or any spontaneous stuff happening off camera. And then in between episodes, I'm just going to run around and basically loot anything that is not um, stealing and anything that is not nailed down. Because we are going to need the resources 
but it might be a bit boring if I just um, yeah do the do all the all the looting and plundering. So I'm gonna spare you that and um, do that off camera. Here's the market. I'm um, gonna return to that in a second. I really wanna. Oh, does that big guy have a dead goat strapped to his face? I think that is commenting on Gunnar's beard. <laughs> All right, there's Skala Grimmer. Um, let's talk with him. Hello. Being the most powerful woman in Denmark, Ranghildr has a second longhouse just for her herdmen. Warriors from all over the north come here to seek work and to train with their renowned Huskals. You recognize Skala Grimmer from your father's funeral feast. The tall man is Ranghildr's bannerman and lover, and he never leaves her side. He actually does look a bit like the YouTuber Skala Grimm. <laughs> Especially with the undercut and all that. I wonder if the death actually took him as, a, as an inspiration. <laughs> I don't know. He raises a hand in greeting. Hello there, Thorgrim. I greatly enjoyed myself at your feast, especially the show you put on at the end. You fight well. That means a lot coming from you. I'm told you and Ranghildr fought a dozen of horrid war-toothed Huskars at Brevelier. Oi, it's true. You stood back to back and faced them three or four at a time. The fight took a whole day. Tell me, what brought you to Reeve today? Looking to hire a crew for my ship? Well, I wonder if I should be as open with him as I should be with Ranghildr. I guess I will. It doesn't look too trustworthy though, but... Hmm. I'm gonna play it a little bit closer to my chest with him. I mean, they might share anything in their lover's confidence anyways, but I don't have to say it out in the open. I need a few good warriors for my herd. Scratches his beard pensively. You've chosen a bad time to recruit. Mercenaries have no trouble finding low-risk work at the moment. What with the trouble in the marsh? What trouble? People have been disappearing in those marshes for years, but it's gotten a lot worse lately. As many as a dozen disappearances over the past two months. Entire trade caravans simply vanish in there. The whole city is awash in rumors of lantern men, man-eating witches and other such nonsense. If your interest goes beyond idle curiosity, I suggest you ask Ranghilder about it. She's been trying to find people willing to do something about it. Alright, so we got another quest. Uh, we seem to be prevented from recruiting these guys, which is fair. I've heard about you. You're all right in my book. Okay, I appreciate it. I appreciate the sentiment. If you look at all these ships. All trade for miles around goes through this harbor. Yeah, but also they look really cool. They're quite beautiful, yes. I must admit, I'm starting to look forward to our journey. What? Some foul spirit of the underworld has taken possession of Aslife. Quick, throw him in the river. <sighs> Forget I said anything. He said Aslife. Is the R not spoken? If I have any Danish speaking people among my subscribers, please let me know. Maybe I'm saying all those names wrong? I thought you did actually say the R. I mean, is this Rikulf or Rikulfur? Mm, please let me know um, if you can. Actually, I might look it up in between episodes if the R is silent. Well, this is the guy that is selling the, the armor and the stuff of his lost wife, Agundra. A sorry looking man sits on the boardwalk, a small selection of equipment spread out on a wool blanket in front of him. He looks up at you with dark rimmed eyes. Hail, honorable Thane. Are you in need of weapons or armor, perchance? How does he know that I'm a Thane, though? I mean, okay, I guess I'm a warrior dude with um, a herd behind me. Why are you selling your equipment? I'm no warrior. These things belong to my beautiful wife, Vigundr. Or Vigund, I guess. She fell in Frisia, defending a, defending a group of traders. Without her, there's nothing left for me here. I'm going back east to my ancestral village, but I need to buy a place on a ship. Tell me about her. The widower exhales deeply. She was the most beautiful woman in the world. Her hair was gold and it flowed around her shoulders like a waterfall. When she smiled, everything else seemed colorless by comparison. When she laughed, there was no other sound in the world. She chose the life of a shield maiden before we met. I wanted nothing more than to settle down with her, but she was too full of life for such a modest existence. I will never love another woman. I will never be able to. 
Out of the corner of your eye, you actually catch Nefia wiping her eyes with a sleeve. <laughs> How much do you need? I cast his eyes down to the damp boardwalk. It seems the going rate is about 50 autoc of silver. Less if I could work for my upkeep, but I know nothing of ships. If I can sell all of Vigundr's equipment, that should cover it with silver to spare in the end. Well, let me see what you have then. The centerpiece of the selection is a suit of decent but unremarkable hide armor. A nasty slash across the chest has been very competently repaired. You would estimate its original worth to be about around 300 valuables. In front of the selection lies a winged spear that could probably fetch 200 when new and coiled around it a simple flex sling, probably worth around 150. A standard leather trim helmet worth 100 valuables or so rounds off the collection. Um, this text differs a little bit from what we got um, in the preview build where it looked like he was selling the stuff at a considerable discount. Um, but it was also kind of confusing because it didn't tell me how many valuables I would spend. It just, it just said Ortok of Silver and the game, or Ertok of Silver, and the game assumed that I knew that the exchange rate was um, 10 to 1. So 10 valuables is one Ortok. Yeah, I think I'm going to buy everything. Um, the thing is, even though we won't be able to use the spear, we can still... Um, can still take it apart for some salvage and uh, use it to forge other weapons we're going to go into this in one of the next episodes i think um let's buy the armor for 200 valuables thank you kind thane might you be interested in anything else yeah give me the spear thank you kind thane give me the sling thank you and give me the helmet as well tears almost well up in his eyes but he manages to fight them back thank you oh thank you at least i can afford the journey home he gets up, rubs his legs briefly, then rolls up the wool cloth and slowly makes his way across the boardwalk and towards the nearest ship. Okay, good journeys. Good journeys. So, now we actually got some um, better equipment. We, I think we can afford to um, equip Aslifer. So, have a Gundur's helmet. Mm, is that one better than the one I'm wearing? No, it isn't really. Yeah. I have that. Although, I mean, she could use a helmet as well. Why do you have no damage reduction? Hmm. Is it because you're fatigued? Is that the thing? Is that the problem? That's weird. Hmm. If I give you that helmet. Yeah, that does that doesn't do anything. And one of these guys are bugged. Um let's hope that they aren't. <laughs> let's just hope that they aren't. I have no idea how this works, but cattle shouldn't be shouldn't be um Hmm, I, I wonder how this works. It says no damage reduction whatsoever. Really? I mean, he's hesitant. Affects physical and mental resistances, but it shouldn't affect this. There's some block chance. He also has no damage reduction. This means that they'll get down, that they'll go down real quick if they get hit with anything. That would not be good. Um, I will actually, I will try and test that by resting somewhere. Unadulterated condescension radiates from dark eyes under bushy eyebrows. It's rare to see such arrogance on the face of such a blatantly unrefined man. I know you, the Thane of Skern, right? Saw you fight some ill-equipped farm boys at your father's funeral. Hmm, I hope to see how you fare against a real warrior once. Be careful what you wish for. He dismisses the threat with a roll of his eyes. Yeah, I tremble in fear of the implications. Heard you looking for a crew. Afraid I already hired everyone who's worth their salt. What are you doing here? J 
just preparing my ship for a little excursion across the sea. Got some mates in Orkney are waiting for me to visit. Uh, you better stay clear. Hmm. Don't get out of yourself, friend. The big man turns his back to you in a rather rude fashion. Well, I must get on with the preparations. Good win in your sails. I really don't get this. No damage reduction whatsoever. He's pleased though, so it can't be this. It can't be the morale. Odd. It doesn't tell me the fatiguing, really. Hmm. I guess we. I guess I'm gonna try this. Let's see if it has any implications. Still learning the game as it goes. I guess we gotta travel to this site. <clears throat> Hello, forest campsite. Let's go for it. Um, healthy. Yeah, these guys are fatigued. Um, I already read that off screen. So. I think we're fine here. I think we're just gonna. We need make to make sure that he's um, that he's sleeping properly. Um, so let's have him guard two, and then give him two shifts of rest, and then we have Gunnar take the other two. We need at least uh, five ranks of guarding, so we won't be really well guarded. Only forty-four, which isn't great. Um, Adis is gonna cook for us. She has cook rank three. Um, Kettle. You're fatigued, you definitely have to sleep um, your first two shifts. And then I think you're gonna, we're going to send you hunting. Um, wouldn't mind having that. We still got some meat, so Rosqua, you are going ahead and uh, you'll actually preserve some, some meat like that. And then you get two nights of sleep in. That's fine. Um, I will go ahead and clean... And then guard at least once. And Nephia, guard here and guard here. And then you can sleep those. And yeah, we need. We actually don't really need to be um, fit, or at least not too fit. Hmm. Let's have our guard over here. Oh no, that's the one I'm guarding. Right, we don't really need the the increased security from that. Let's have a guard that one and that one. She isn't really too fatigued, actually. Well, let's have it like that. I mean, it's not great. Herman is fatigued. Fatigue is one of the worst things that can affect a character. It's a huge detriment to every stat which has wide-ranging uh, knock-on effects in combat. Yeah, we really shouldn't go fatigued into any battles, even if they are in Reba. It's not a good idea. Um... Right, I mean, this is kind of suboptimal. Actually, I could send Nephia and go scout instead. Um, so that we maybe get some resources out of this whole thing. Um, security isn't great. There's actually a chance that we will be subject to theft. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is how it goes. Mm. I mean, I could try and and guard a little bit more like this yeah i think that'll be fine okay let's make camp let's hope that we don't lose anything okay everyone is no longer fatigued um we lost some meat hmm right okay we lost some meat but everyone is fit now again which is good So we found two scouted things. When dinner is ready, um, Aslifer scoops up a big spoonful of stew and sits down next to Raskwa. The warrior appears to be in an unusually good mood. Raskwa, is it true that your teacher is a Volraven? I don't know. Could be. But you live with her, yes? Raskwa nods without looking up from her bowl. You never saw her turn into a raven and fly off in the night. The young witch stares silently into the distance for a moment before replying. There was this one time I awoke from the sound of wings. 
She looks up at Oslifer with a gleam in her eyes. I was sure it came from inside the home, but there was no bird when I lit a candle, and Hulda wasn't in her bed either. The young witch shrugs and turns her attention back to her food. When I woke up in the morning, she was there again, sleeping like normal. That settles it then. She's clearly a Valraven. How does that settle it? That must have been a nightmare. For all you know, she may have got up to piss and a bird happened to take off outside and wake the girl up. Believe what you will. The crone always had the look of a shapeshifter about her. And Rusqua's story is enough to convince me. How about you, Thorgrim? You think Holder is a, is a shapeshifter? I've been going the superstitious route, or the, the believer route, so I'm certain she is. That it would explain her strange behavior. But I do have a lot of sense though. I mean, superstition and sense don't really go hand in hand. Yeah, I'm certain she is. It is true. Skeptical followers have lost morale. Aslifer looks thoroughly vindicated. Just as I said, we shall keep an eye on the old woman the next time we're home. Who knows what she did to earn that curse? Rasquith smiles into her stew. Okay, let's get that. We gain four wood. And a tripwire. Okay, I take it. Alright, so let's take Rasquith, Gunnar, and Aslifer. And now let's see what the damage reduction is. Because if you have zero damage reduction, you'll get down super quick. I really don't want that. I really don't want that. I'm actually pretty happy that we didn't get attacked in that camp. Um, that was a fair chance for it. <laughs> and nothing got stolen and all that. So yeah, we really have to level some of our, some of our guarding skills. We are here at night though, which is kind of shitty. Let's just hope that they're doing normal business. Um, so how's your damage reduction? Yeah, it's it's back up again. So that's good. That's good. That makes me happy. That makes me happy. Um, yeah, I can't go really long with my stamina before I get fatigued. As much as eight is, interestingly enough. Okay, but that answers this. Um, you get reduced damage reduction if you don't sleep properly. I heard about you. You're alright in my book. Okay. Is there a penalty to fighting in the night? Don't know actually. But yeah, business sh seems to go on as usual. So that's something. Hmm. Ingemar Broad, so yeah, I think. I think there was something with him. Pretty sure that he's um, not an honest dude. Can you please go with us on? Let's talk with him. A young boy stands before a stall packed with crates and baskets full of bent and broken metal, pelts rolled up and haphazardly stacked, and coils of hemp rope and horsehair string and other pieces of unidentifiable junk. He beams when you come here and casts a glance at his father in the back of the tent, who motions encouragingly in your direction. Highly esteemed warrior, welcome into our humble tent. My name is Knibli. How may I serve you today? You sell hide and salvage? That's right. What you see before you is Rebus' most impressive selection of materials for smithing, tailoring, or even um. The father's boy chuckles quietly from the back. Carpentry. Or even carpentry. Do you like to build things? Not myself, but I count skilled craftsmen among my friends. The child's father sneaks up behind him. I'm sure the Thane of Skjern has much to worry about, son. Responsibility like that doesn't leave much time for crafts. The boy's eyes grow wide. You're a thane? That's right. If you're looking for high quality supplies, you'll find none better than what we offer. Aren't you a uh, little young to be in charge here? It's not a problem. Dad's right back there. I'll get him if there's trouble. The boy changes the topic so fast you almost get whiplash. What's your name? I'm Thorgrin. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Thorgrim. Let me see what you have. So this is the, the trading thing. We can sort of um, exchange stuff for other stuff. Can barter. Uh, we don't have a lot. And you can't exchange like for like. Um, it'll tell you um, if the prices are fair and how the supply is, which does affect the prices. We could sell all our hides for their valuables. We could sell our, our wood for valuables. Um, these guys are actually giving us some, some nice prices here. 
the asking 10 valuables for one wood. Um, I am, I'm tempted. Currently, we don't have any valuables. But yeah, I sort of do like the trading thing. Um, all right, maybe some other time. Yeah, perhaps some other time. It's fine. Um, let's save it. Um, then we're going to talk with her. Just want to get through the market real quick. A well-dressed woman in her mid-40s stands behind two stalls. A pair of young men are loading sacks and baskets from one of the stalls onto a cart. The trader greets you with a polite smile. Step right up, my good man. If you're looking for food or medicine, you've come to the right place. Um, what do you sell? She sweeps her arm in a wide arc, encompassing both stalls. Everything you see here is for sale. We're well stocked with fresh herbs and preserved foods. We also sell fresh meats from the surrounding farms, and if you seek a remedy for illness or injury, we offer a modest selection of medical tinctures. Where do you get your goods? My sons and I collect goods from several small villages to the south. The profits are shared among the farmers. That's awfully nice of you. Our herbal remedies are made by my aunt Gunlogr. She's a wise old woman, well versed in every imaginable affliction. So show me what you have. She's selling different stuff. She's selling herbs and meat and rations. So, And we could um, sell our stuff as well for things. Yeah, she has a very low demand for that kind of thing. We could sell our meat though. Could gain 25 variables from this. I'm actually, I still don't have a firm grasp on the game's, um, on the game's economy, so I'm gonna refrain from trading for at least a little bit longer. Um, let's talk with this guy. Yarda Jaranskegason. A portly man with receding hair dressed in several layers of fine furs waves at you as you pass through the market. Honorable warrior, a moment of your time, please. Hey, Luxel. I'm sorry to impose upon you like this, but I see you travel with a retinue that marks you as a man of high standing. My name is Yarda Janskegerson. I'm a merchant trading in ironworks from the east. Ah. I recently bought a house near the docks and moved here hoping to establish trade roads to Frisia, perhaps even beyond. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Due my tremendous misfortune, Having already purchased the house before coming here, I've arrived to find it occupied by rats. They're a fierce bunch, and I cannot take up residence in my home before they've been routed. I've had to dearly lodge with a business acquaintance for the past two weeks while I've attempted to resolve the situation. I've been met with a dismaying lack of support from the Jarlsman, You'd think the Yarl would be interested to get rid of such vermin and restore order to her domain, but no. What sort of compensation can I expect? As mentioned, I trade in fine iron works. Your assistance in this matter will be worth, perhaps, iron materials worth 100 or took of silver? Very well, I don't see why I shouldn't aid you. A few rodents won't pose a problem. The other sigh of relief billows from his lips as a plume of steam in the frosty air. Thank you, thank you, magnanimous warrior. I implore you to return here where my house is cleared of the rats and it's safe for me to move in. I'll be waiting with bated breath. All right, <laughs> we're going to find out that these rats are actually not rats at all. <laughs> I think we can do that right now, that quest, because um, I don't intend to fight these rats. You'll see what I mean in a second. Um, they're over here, I think. Yeah. There they are. Hello. Yada's directions take you to a set of small homes not far from the market. The walls are dirty, the doorway skewed, and one of the roofs has several large cracks. A group of young men and women dressed in rags are loitering about the courtyard. The oldest of them, a boy perhaps 15 or 16, gets up and saunters over when you enter. Hey, you lost, old man? We're not interested in company. Sorry, my young man. Let me just rest my arthritic 25-year-old legs a moment before I leave. The kid lets out an amused snort despite himself. He looks almost impressed for a moment before he regains his composure. Yada sent you, right? If you're here to throw us out, it's not gonna work. Smarter people than you have tried. Ah, I get it now. You're the rats. Aye, you're a sharp one, all right. <laughs> He wipes his nose in an already rather crusty sleeve. You can try and catch us if you fancy a chase, but lots of people have tried. And we're still about, yeah? You're not gonna fight me? How can I convince you to leave peacefully? Unless you find us another place to live, we're staying right here. 
You can run us out like the last people that Hawkbelly sent. We'll just be back when you're gone. This is our place. You can tell him Jumper said so. Mm. Who are you kids? What are you? Slow witted? We are the rats. You said so yourself. Um, I'm gonna give this some thought. I could send them to Skjern and give them the the farm that I took from uh, um, Erling Thorgerson, I think. Um, but it is gonna reduce uh, the prosperity of our town because these guys are, yeah, they're street rats. Um, it's kind of a nice thing to do that, and you're gonna get an amulet from them, which wasn't in the in the Let's Try um, build that I played. So I'm kind of interested to see what kind of amulet we get. Um, but I'm pretty sure there's another way um, to solve this. I really don't want to go around and beat street kids. That's just not right. Mm. On the other hand, there is something to be said for um, filling that farm again. And I don't really see people lining up for that. Mm. And I think last time we actually went um, to to Funen for the tomb raiding before we went to Ribe. So I don't think that there's anyone there that would like to move into this area, uh, into into our farm. Don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if I can't solve this in the city on its own. I'll give it some thought. Um, right, so let's move on for now. At least now we have um, the goal to find something for them. Um, here's the um, the temple, so let's go in there. Let's talk with the uh, with the priestess. We need st we still need the medicine for Nephia's sister. That's Nephia. Um, let's save it. Is there anything that we can? Oh yeah, we can actually plunder something here. So I'll do that. Two lakhs and a wood danex. I'm gonna take it. We can still salvage some stuff from it. It's not stealing. String bladder. It's not stealing if they give it willingly to you. Um, so we have the the, uh, the shrine to Thor. The elaborately carved hammer on Thor's shrine has been almost worn away from many years of prayer to the god of strength, storms and harvest. We have Freya over here. I played with some kind of sweet smelling powder has been placed next to Freya's shrine among the pile of precious jewelry sacrificed to the goddess of love, fertility and war. Um, and this must be Odin's shrine then. Someone has carefully placed a fine old sword against Odin's shrine, no doubt hoping to win the favor of the god of wisdom, sorcery and death. And we're going to talk with the Godi. The Gida is young, not much older than you. Her blonde hair is elaborately braided and uh, her brightly colored dress embroidered with complex religious patterns. She greets you with a polite but distant smile in a strangely breathy voice. Welcome in. My name is Svana. I am a Gidia here at the temple. Is this your first time visiting? I think I may have come here with my father a long time ago. Then we're honored to host you again. Have you come to petition the gods? Mm, I want to make an offering. She opens her arms in a gesture that encompasses the two shrines at the sides of the room. We have shrines to Odin, Thor and Freya here, but I am happy to accept offerings for any Azir or Vanir you wish to appease. The offering will be stored in the temple until the spring blot, where it will be added to the sacrifice. Of course it's best if you can attend the blot yourself. I don't have fifty rations apparently. I must think on this then. Hmm? Yes, of course. Such decisions require careful deliberation. I need medicine for a sick friend. She nods politely, looking, looking through you as if her mind is somewhere else. We are always happy to help. Please describe the illness. She has a deep, awful cough and a fever. She's been bedridden for many weeks. Can you help her? The Gildia maintains her awakened stare. Yes, I hope. I need moldy bark from the troll tree. Where does this tree stand? In the marsh to the southeast. Look for the patches of yellow-green mold on its trunk. If you bring me that bark, I will use it to make a cure for you. All right, we're not going to ask her to share a story about the gods because these actually do go on a fairly long time. I really don't want to walk down the pace of this, so um, let's just move on. Move out into the city. There's still stuff to encounter. But at least no one is fatigued. <laughs> 
It's actually really a severe penalty if it takes away all your damage reduction. Um, makes it nearly impossible to fight when you're fatigued. I mean, I get it. Your defensive capabilities are just really down if you um, if you get attacked while you're while you're dead tired. Hmm. I think this way is to the market. Yeah, we're in the market now. I think there are two fighting encounters in here that we could go for. Um, I think one is just around here. Oh yeah, that's a smith. Um, I'm gonna talk with him a little bit later. Yes, here's the first encounter. And oh yeah, the shield actually did something for us. Um, it still managed to down me nearly. <laughs> Holy cow. Demoralize. Okay, he's running a, a fair bit towards us. I am demoralized now. And I've been I've been pretty much downed. Which is shitty. Um let's heal myself. I don't wanna go down. <laughs> it's not good. Okay. We can still bring her into some form of cover. Um Right, so what do I do here? We got this. I can't reach the archer, but I should really stop the archer from coming after us. Um, we've got Gunnar here. Yeah, I can run him up to the archer, and I think I will do that. Possibly. Um, let's go ahead. You are the demoralizing guy. Okay, I get that. Oh yeah, right. We needed the helm. Uh, we also needed a green screen to work properly, but what can you do? Alright. Getting ambushed in the street like, street like every other day. That's completely normal for me. That's how I roll. So, I mean, I think I might actually be able to take this guy out if I run up to him. Which would be good. He's a berserker as well. Um, I'm actually gonna switch my weapon before I, before I do this, so... Come on. Throw that stuff at him. Gotta pull out my Dane Axe. He's harried now, which means that if I run up to him, yeah, I have a really good chance of taking him out. Yo! Take the axe to the face! <laughs> nice! Um, if I can remove him, I could actually bring my guy over here and threaten that rogue. Uh, might not be a bad idea. I wonder if Gunnar can actually move past this thing. Mm, I got Nephia. Yeah, this these slippery ice patches, I mean, I gotta trust that she's graceful enough to actually avoid them. But if she doesn't, we're boned. So I'm not gonna attempt it right now. Aslifer, you're still way back. I think I need Gunnar to run up to um, this archer. Which means I'm gonna bring Aslifer up. Take that guy out. Yeah, you're done. Now, um, Björk was killed. Actually, I would like to have these guys live. Although, on the other hand, we need the crits, kind of. I wanna know who they are, though. So, let's go for non lethal from now on. Um, Gunnar. Oh, you're actually not able to get there. At least not completely. Well, let's go for Tur's favor then. Get the status effect favored by Tur. Total damage reduction plus 25. That's super powerful, so let's go for it. We can still bring him into cover somewhere. Um, I mean, you don't necessarily have to though. No, I won't. I'm actually going to move him forward. Now that we got the damage reduction. Now Nephia. Um, move up. Move you over. Switch the weapons. Attack the guy. That's what happens when you cross me. Nice. Critical hit. That's really good. Um, can't bring her into cover. 
which is a bit of a shame. I can't switch my weapons anymore. Fine though, fine though. Um, cattle, let's switch. Am I able to hit this guy at all? No, I'm not. Um, can I go for the fire arrow over here? No, I have no chance of hitting that person. I mean, I could throw uh, shoot a spotting area. I cannot use low cover. Range attacks where this character have 25% accuracy. Is that low cover over here? I think so, actually. Um, let's just have a look. Yeah, that is low cover. Nice. So we're going to flush you out of uh, flush you out of your cover. All right. That's good. So yeah, out of cover. 55% chance to hit. That's not a lot. I think we should just go for a for an aim shot here. Looks like the kind of thing that one might want. Although the difficulty is reaching them. Not necessarily, not necessarily dealing damage to them. I have a higher chance to apply the fire damage than not. What's the quick shot doing? 55% chance. I mean, there's a chance that we can just straight out take that archer guy out. There's also a chance that we do no damage. Most likely we're just going to do one shot. Hmm. I wonder what the burning does. 20 to 30 hit points per turn lost. We'll try it. We're going to go for the fire arrow here. Nope. Okay, not having it. And we also wasted our fire arrow charge. <laughs> Shame. Um, got to bring you into cover then at least. Um, Roskova, you might as well move up into some sort of cover. Can't move you, really. Um, I can move up myself, though. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move you up next to the rogue. Let's see how it goes. Um, finish the turn. And we're demoralized again. That won't help you, though. Just telling you now. Holy moly. Fine. Critical hit. Oh, Nephi was incapacitated. Yeah, she was out in the open. She sustained a light puncture to the arm. Crap. Crap. Well, you're gonna get it. Should have pulled her away. Mm, but someone's gonna take the damage. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skill these three to be less likely to be attacked because they really can't take too much damage there. We did miss this guy. If I go for the Reckless Strike, I have a chance of actually taking that guy out, I think. I don't think it's actually displaying the amount of damage that I can deal correctly. Well, kind of correctly, actually. Shame. Um, what about this? Yeah, I really should have gone for the Demoralizing as well. Can I reach the Archer now? Gunnar. Are you able to get there? Well, kind of. Let's make it happen. Ah, And he's poisoned. Move on. Okay, no more archery tricks for you. Without taking an attack of opportunity. Um, Aslifer. This guy is nearly down. Hmm. I wonder. I don't have a clear shot there. Still no clear shot. Still no clear shot. Now I have a shot, but only 27%. That doesn't help me at all. Let's do this. Come on. Yes, he's down. Good. Um, so let's take that one down then. I really don't want Nephia to be down any longer than we really have to. So this guy is incapacitated now and Ketil. So yeah, let's go for the aim shot here. Does make a degree of sense. Yes, okay. I have no problem with um, the enemy getting the drop on me right now. 
in this situation because we're actually being ambushed so it does make a fair amount of sense oh yeah i can actually reach over this thing that's interesting okay you're gonna get it day next to the face goodbye bastards attacking me like that i'm gonna patch up nephia as well light puncture really would like to have the tooltip show what it actually does to her. That would be kind of useful. Um, oh yeah, right. Um, settings. Just a second. I'm going to reset the green screen. Okay, yeah, that does it. Good. Um, Keto. What in Thor's name was that all about? Who are these people? Nephew nudges one of the attackers with the tip of a boot, eliciting a groan. This one's still alive. I'm gonna grab the survivor. Who sent you? Speak! You met with a gaze that speaks clearly to your prospects. You get nothing out of this person. I'm gonna check their pockets. You and your herd each picks an attacker to search. Nephew raises a hand, holding something that glimmers in the light. Found something. A medallion of some kind. Examine the medallion. The silver medallion is the centerpiece of a pearl necklace. You don't recognize the exotic patterns that adorn it, but somebody in this town must know. All right, so we've got to ask villagers in here, or townspeople. Gunnar leans over to get a look at the necklace. Hmm, that pattern looks faintly familiar. I can't quite place it, though. I may have seen something like it up in Kaupang. Perhaps we should ask around in the market. Uh, I think I will. Um, so we'll get some string. A water skin. Just plunder all, plan all these fools. You're empty. I guess you've got an empty existence as well. And that one's empty as well. Um, yeah, I think I'm I think I'm gonna end the episode here. Um, we did a fair deal. We traveled to Reba. We found out about the damage reduction thing. I wanna do what I wanna see what Nephia's problem is now with her with her light puncture. She has no strength. Reduces the strength by two. I think we can live with that. The problem is that wounds, if you don't treat them, they actually tend to get worse. And at some point, there's even a chance that they kill your people. So it's not good to leave them untreated. Um, I hope that we don't sustain any more wounds. Um, but yeah, for now, I'm going to end it here. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. If you didn't, tell me why in the comments so I can improve. And if you want to see more, please consider subscribing. I hope you join me next time for um, more Reba action leveling up our guys and then um moving on to uh moving on to the the tomb raiding hope you join me for that bye bye